I didn't say happy Saturday and it is definitely a happy Saturday for these little happy ducks they love the water so much I can't wait till we have their own big pond for them nice and green time to dry up this is what they do every time they have a, a bath or a swim then they start getting the water out of their their down which is apparently what you call um, if you like duckling feathers before they actually develop their feathers. The house is all cleaned, the ducks are all clean, I'm all clean with a fresh hair wash ready for tomorrow's event. I am about to go to the shops with Musa. We're going to do some quick bit of groceries and some other shopping that needs to be done. This is my outfit. It's something very casual. You guys saw these uh, mum jeans that I bought the other day from Kmart in like the multiple colors that I now have because they're that comfortable. Um, with just a white tank top, some white sandals and my black handbag. It's not nothing special. The weekend is always more of a chill vibe, but it's nice considering how uh, warm. And see there, you can see Musa packing away the ducks, considering how warm it is outside. Side note, does anyone ever find it hard to wear pinky rings? I suppose maybe everyone has that finger. I struggle for some reason to be comfortable with pinky rings and I really like this ring. And so I want to wear it, but I just, I just can't bring myself to like it. What's wrong? <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> of course I got another iced tea! It's so hot outside, it's like 30 degrees. You guys together? Yeah, that's yes. my partner, yeah. I love it. Have we got little commitment rings going on? Oh yeah, Cheers. we've got Cheers. promise Irish promise rings. If you're going, peace. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, she definitely is. I think I definitely am vibing with this overlook. Yeah. We'll turn it that way. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. right, right, right. Um, Celtic signature ring. That's not something I thought so of. Mm. Oh my gosh! I think. Oh, I don't know. They're so nice. <laughs> so what you guys would have just seen. Sorry, I didn't explain prior because I actually had no intention of doing that today. But it was a bit impromptu. But I went into a couple of jewelry stores. The first one was useless, to put it bluntly but um, I'm looking for a signet ring at the moment so uh, I do believe that this is a tradition amongst you know English Irish Scottish Welsh culture and I think maybe even some other parts of Europe but I can't be sure to have a signet ring with your family crest or some sort of a family associated emblem even if it's just your initials on a ring that you pass down as like an heirloom in your family that sounds very fancy <laughs> I like a little bit of fancy in my life here and there but I I am on the hunt for a signet ring and it's coming up in a few months to the 10 year anniversary since I ran away from home and anyone that's been here for a while will know that on that anniversary I buy myself a present a little anniversary present as a, a celebratory gift to acknowledge what I feel like was one of the biggest achievements in my life so that just uh, was a, a bit of a preview in the hunt for it. I'll see what I come up with. I'm going to do some research. She gave me a website to look at. I'll do some research and, and have a little bit of a think, but I'll keep you guys updated on, on how it goes. And eventually, hopefully, I will have some, uh, some sort of a signet ring to unbox with you all. My boyfriend is one of the funniest people at times. And as soon as the camera stops recording, he says all the jokes that I promise you, you guys will die at. If you're Arab, I'm going to say it because he's not going to say it now that the no, camera's give on. give me a drum roll. <laughs> I said the best thing we have is a family cuff. Yeah. We hand it down from generation to generation. Because <laughs> what is this family crest business? Trauma humor or any Arab bit, I swear I can relate to that. But it's funny also because we were talking about jewelry and I'm... I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he was having a bit of a play on words then, you know, like cufflings, maybe like some sort of jewellery reference there. Sorry, it's probably a bit loud because the window's down, but yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Home time and it's time to take out the doxies. 
Hey! Hey! Come on, come out! Come on. Hello! Come. Oh, hi! <laughs> Mummy's got some food for you too. That one's all yours. Uh, uh, relax. Relax. Don't be greedy. <laughs> go to share. Yeah, that one's all yours. There you go. No, this one's not for you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh! Good job, guys. Oh, he took it. All right, come on, look. Mummy's got some more food for you too. Come on. Do you want some duck feed? Look. Do you want oh, yeah, some? Oops. No, you want tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. That, how long haven't they had tomatoes yet? Uh, I gave them tomatoes not yesterday, the day before. Yeah, yeah they just noticed the food. Yeah, they're eating, babe. They're eating. Oh, hi. Hi. Have I told you guys today how much I love you? <laughs> yes, you. Well, hello. Come to join the party, have we? These are called galahs. They're so beautiful. Honestly stunning. They've got this nice pink underneath their, their, their heads. <laughs> Enjoying those sunflower seeds, are we? Whoops. I'm trying to get this bird to trust me enough to come in. Whoops, that's very zoomed in. Sorry. To come in and land on my hand for some bird feed. But I have a feeling quite a long shot. And the other one's up there. <laughs> getting them to come so oh excuse you would you like it i knew that was going to happen as soon as i walked away so i they saw me put it into the bird feeder and then as soon as i walked away they flew down it's all right maybe with some persistence eventually over time they will feel comfortable to land in my hand yes you well as we say in arabic <laughs> Now that we've finished our groceries, Musa is making us a roast chicken for dinner. All that flavor. Oh my gosh, I've had it before and I know it tastes amazing, so I can't wait. And I am going to peel all this garlic. Not all that garlic, but as in like a bunch of it, because it wouldn't be an Arab dish without a lot of a garlic. That's a lot of a garlic. Actually, is it ever enough garlic? To be honest, I don't think there's such a thing. I spy with my little eye some thorn. Oh, this is like liquid gold to the Arabs. Yum! How cute is this? We've got some little leftover minuscule potatoes from our last potato harvest that we did. I think they're adorable. I've just come downstairs because I have to bring in the ducks. And look, I just was walking past the mirror and I was like, perks of having a favorite color is that essentially when it comes to what you're wearing or, or even not just wearing in your own home, things tend to go because you buy everything in a similar color. And look, my apron goes with my outfit. <laughs> Good night, my loves for now. We'll bring you in later. You're still too young to stay outside in your coop. Enjoy your dinner. For my birthday last year, my cousin Phil Lo gave me this and we've never cracked it open. So I think tonight is the night. Surprise! You guys are not shocked at me anymore at this stage, but see these bananas? It means it is time to again make more banana bread, which is perfect, even though it's a regular in this house, but it will be um, right in time for some dessert. Look at what that looks like. Whoa, this is so nice. I love how the bag just goes and flares up, which means it's going to be a nice and moist chicken. I know a lot of people don't like that word. And then down here, we have the veggies roasting. Roast is out, banana bread is in, and I've decided to try topping one of them with poppy seeds. So um, I don't know why I have to think about that, but we'll see how it turns out. Time to pop the bag. Oh, I wish you guys could smell this. Oh, the juices. Yeah, yum. Look at the tomb, the veggies, time to eat. I am definitely someone who loves Zoom. Oh, you can see the steam coming up from the plate. Oh, you hear that? 
I have no idea what this is going to look like. Oh, it looks like babies. I'd say that's enough, yeah. Yeah? Up to you. You want more? For now, there's a long test. Okay. Cheers! There's still another 25 minutes. Oh, the poppy seeds! That actually looks really good! I did probably overfill them a little bit too much, but it will look like a nice loaf of bread. So it's <laughs> I can't wait to try it! <laughs> Numero uno! This is the poppy seed one. And just the standard for number two, a banana bread. I am very happy with how that looks. I just can't wait to try the poppy seed one. Oh. We've just given them their second bath or swim, if you like, for the day. And as usual, they're just out here drying themselves. And would you look at what their dad, I know I'm calling him their dad because he is their, their duck dad, what he has done for them. He set up a heater. He, he set up a heater for them while they try. You guys are so spoiled. I would have to assume perhaps two of the most spoiled ducks in all of Australia. I don't like their mum. <laughs> if you guys didn't hear that, he just remarked kind of like their mum. Too true. Welcome to the spoiled club, my loves. <laughs> look at this, look at this like little science experiment situation I have happening here. Happy Sunday, everyone. It is the most eventful Sunday here today. I mentioned to you guys that I have a poetry performance this weekend. So that is tonight. I'm opening a play in the city with three of my poems. And if I can record any of it, I will of course share it with you and show you in this blog. But it is also eventful because Musa and I, which you will probably see him coming out here in a minute with the tractor, are going to be trying to take down <laughs> some pillars to start getting ready to build the roof of the duck house. I see you got it started. <laughs> have absolutely no idea how oh Morsa has a chain okay yep that's how we're doing it they've been rolled into the bucket which we couldn't do in the past because granddad didn't have this little contraption here <laughs> yeah. so now we're gonna try this reversing reversing i say this all the time i know but honestly living on a farm is the greatest gift to my entire existence they're locked and loaded! Woo! Oh. All right, and now let's roll these babies out. <laughs> He's just gonna tip them. <laughs> One is, keep going. The other one doesn't wanna leave. Keep going, keep going. You'll get it. Yep, yep, yep. There we go! <laughs> Thanks, Farmer Musa! <laughs> uh, also, while I'm here, I never showed you guys, Grandad ended up cutting the top of this um, soon-to-be pot for the mulberry tree. So I'm going to paint this at some stage when Musa and I paint the duck coop. And then when it's all done, I'll show you guys. Down she goes! <laughs> And voila, here is the result of Musa's hard work today. One pole has gone up and now we just need, I think, another three to go. But very good to start. And now I need to go and get ready. Oh, and another quick update in the garden. I'll put a photo over here. This plant I only got a couple weeks ago, if you remember, when I was in my local garden center. Look how much it's flourished. And it's not coming up on camera how vibrant that pink is. Like, it looks almost white on camera, but it is so, so incredibly pink. 
it's beautiful and very delicate i must say those leaves are quite fragile but beautiful lunch time come on come get your lunch some peas and tuna come on searsha i actually haven't told and now is as good a time as ever i suppose so now that we have pretty much figured out what their genders are. Well, most likely. Most likely. We think one is a boy for sure and one is a girl. And on the left is the bigger duck. So Musa last night after a bit of a discussion named him Darwish. And we already know that um, the girl that I initially got, and now I'm presuming that she was the girl at first, but regardless, it doesn't matter. Her name is still Sirsha. So Jemima has unfortunately been scrapped because now we we think one's a boy if that changes i'll update you again but darwish and sirsha everyone change of plan before i get ready i've tried to give these guys a little bit of a a pond a bath <laughs> a swim outside i can't wait for their actual pond to be built honestly this is so so small for them but they're enjoying themselves nonetheless oh outfits of this year so i've done a whole get ready with me so i'll explain each item piece by piece when i post that and you'll see it on shorts um and any other platform that you watch watch uh, my content on but i am in a bit of a hurry i have to go i'll keep you guys updated along the way but this outfit i'm so happy with it well didn't this shite just give me a panic attack i am meant to be there at four and I forgot because it was daylight savings last night that this, this whoopsies this hasn't changed yet. So it says 3:47, but it should be there. Whoops, there we go. 2:47. Thank you. We have arrived into the city. Very much uh, probably the only greenery you will see around here is um, this street. Not much to be seen in our city, to be honest. And there, if you can see in the distance is UTS which means we are close that is the venue right there KXT on Broadway Musa is carrying all my books how nice and I'm ready I've got my book too because I'm giving the host one and my other book for the poem that I'm reading that's not published in my book yet all right that's the play I'm opening for the love of paper and we have a little book stall set up. This is so surreal every time I see these. I don't know if it's ever actually going to fully sink in. I hear the bell. <laughs> I think it's so nice. He's wearing his map of Lebanon necklace and I'm wearing my map of Palestine necklace. She will be reading three poems yeah. from her beautiful book, Recovering from Poetry, which will be for sale after. So, thank you. Hi. Um, so I've been invited to read three poems for you guys, roughly in and around the theme of what the play afterwards is about. So I've tried to get it as close to those topics as possible. So to start with, I'm going to read two poems from my book. The first one is called Australian Made from Imported Ingredients, um, <laughs> which is kind of, if you like, a bit of a, an ode to my love for what my family could acquire by being here, but then also by the maintenance of my culture. I'll start with that one. Australian made from imported ingredients, born and raised in Sydney whilst to my culture obedient. And I'll try never to take for granted this blessing in disguise. So here's to the country that raised me, whilst affording me the chance to maintain the cultures that made me. It always was and always will be. And altogether, I am so grateful, truly. An ode to the struggle that is finding yourself in trying to keep your parents happy when you consider their culture and, and their expectations, whilst also trying to keep, your, keep yourself happy, trying to find yourself in this new environment. To second generation to feel like a local and yet to, too local to feel like a second generation. The ones who feel lost and yet found in this new cultural demonstration where we learn to appreciate both sides. The ones that came before us and those that also gave us a means to decide. Uh, a rant, <laughs> to some degree. <laughs> okay, and, oh, and also...
also actually, it's called Gay, uh, and it's in honor of a man called Federico Garcia Lorca, who was a Spanish poet in the 1930s, who was murdered for both his political ideals, but also for his sexuality. Here's a topic that people are wondering as to what I'll say because apparently each individual should have an opinion on those that are gay. Well, here's my thoughts on the topic. At what point did we all become an authority? It's chaotic. You see, history has shown us that we're not all experts. And if you're going to quote religious excerpts, then I strongly recommend you read again first. Because if there's anything that I know is the worst, is when we forget that God teaches us to love. No matter your differences, we don't put that above our ability to respect and maintain peace. Because remember, everyone has their own peace of thoughts and ideals shared in this world of ordeals. It's not for me to sit here and dictate from my dominion what I think everyone else should think. It's not my job to declare judgments like it's a kink. Our job is to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Therefore, treat all with equality is what everyone should do. So stop worrying about what everyone thinks. And don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you what to think. Only to remember that opinions are simply that. Thoughts, not facts, just opinions which don't combat anything at all in this life of turmoil. So have we nothing better to do than to create more boil in this overflow of problems this world already has? I guess what I'm trying to say is there's so many red flags in people who use religion as a source of hate. Instead of choosing to simply live and let others do as they instate, in summary, my thoughts are this. It is not my job to dictate what others should dis. To each their own is a famous saying for a reason. It's not up to us to decide what is treason. So if you don't like what someone else is doing, there's another famous saying, turn the other cheek, get moving on with your own life, worry about your own way, because it's not up to you to worry about those that are gay. Yes. and of course the wonderful poet uh, Bernadette Kerwin. Thank you so much, Kirsch. We're looking forward to hearing what everyone has to say. Thank you, everybody. My name is Bernadette, or Berna for short. Um, I'm a, technically a teacher, but my, in terms of art, I'm a, a writer and I, mainly of poetry. And I suppose in terms of the context of, of social change, I tend to write about topics that are, are close to my heart, so I'm half Palestinian and half Irish. Oh, naturally, given the current circumstances, I write a lot about the, the Palestinian cause, but also as someone who's mixed race and a second generation, I talk about my experiences and things like that. And I think it's wonderful because when someone is able to provide their own perspective, especially when it's, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm gonna be forward and say a bit unique in that I'm mixed, it allows people an alternate perspective to what they may have preconceived so yeah that's my little you know natural. naturally to us I always complain that I'm a depressing poet because I, I can't be a, I, I can't be a love poet but then the flip side of that as much as one day I hope I can write love poetry the flip yes. side of that is that I get to be part of something that I feel so genuinely and so honestly so at least mm -hmm. I know that it's as as honest and raw as it can possibly be. And I think art always needs to be that. It needs to be as raw as is possible. I, I probably am shaking the camera a lot with the way that I am walking. I'm so sorry, but I am walking and the ground is a little bit unstable. Plus I have a little bit of a, a heel on. Anyway, that was amazing. It was a really, really, 
beautiful play to say the least and I had an enjoyable experience as well performing my my poems and doing the Q&A after but I shall talk to you guys more tomorrow I just wanted to update you in the immediacy of the event ending anyway good night everyone good morning everyone happy Monday and it might be autumn here in Australia but it definitely looks and feels like summer if I haven't already Happy Monday, everyone. Today I am wearing two new pieces. So remember that white collared shirt I showed you guys in last week's vlog, that $18 one that I told you about 10,000 times was $18. I went back after the weekend when I was doing my groceries and quickly decided to just see if they had anything similar. They did in black and of course I was oh I just realized that that is not buttoned and of course I decided that I was going to get it in black and even if I had it in other colors I probably would get it in that too anyway also new in I have two things to show you today two pairs of shoes I should say these are sketcher flats which I'll show you better front on in a second I bought these because I'm like I said investing in a bit of a new wardrobe building more of a modern classic aesthetic and trying to wear things that are more comfortable and not just wearing cheap shoes especially not when I'm at work because of the fact that they are cheap or look good. But I'm also trying to focus on buying things that I will actually be comfortable in wearing for work and wearing every day so that I feel put together all day every day, not just for work. You can probably hear the ducks outside. Also, I am wearing silver accessories today. I'm also wearing, I'll probably need to take a photo and put it here for you to see better. I am wearing a pair, or I could just take them out and show you. I am wearing a pair of my favorite earrings. I bought these back when I was living in London. And honestly, if you look, don't mind my nails. I know they need to be redone, but busy girl. I'll get there hopefully by the weekend, even though it is Monday, so we're a week away. These these are, I forget what you call these, those cameos, cameos. These are a cameo uh, style earring that I bought when I was living in London. I was being a tourist with my family at Kensington Palace. I was trying to think. I was at Kensington Palace and these were in the souvenir shop. And you guys by now, I am sure are well acquainted with how much I love old things, especially old aesthetic things so I haven't worn them in a while because they tend not to go with many things but they are on today and rather than because I'm wearing my jeans my um, navy jeans and please disregard what I've been saying about trying to avoid wearing jeans it's just a lot harder than I thought maybe as I buy more pants for work I'll stop wearing jeans for work and keep my jeans for the weekend but until then I'm balancing wearing them between more professional clothes for work anyway and rather than wearing what I meant to say rather than wearing my typical navy scarf that I always wear when I'm wearing uh, navy I decided to get this out because I think it pairs nicely with this black top anyway these new shoes they are from Skechers I'm not sure if Skechers is anywhere outside of Australia but in Australia they are like your go-to brand for comfort shoes the trouble is a lot of the time in my opinion they can look a little bit ugly not always some of them are amazing I've got heaps of shoes from them these are for work oh so soft so stretchy this is actually material this isn't leather or anything hard like that that's going to give you blisters and make your feet feel suffocated so I am so happy that I got these I know I recently bought those other black flats as well but that's great so now I have two pairs of black flats for work one is a little bit more casual which is these and the other are more dressy so either way they will both work and the second item I want to show you guys that I got they were both only delivered this morning by the way is another pair of shoes now you have all been hearing me yap on about how I needed to get a pair of new navy shoes because the ones that I do have are in absolute tatters not only have they become quite weak over time but they they also they've stretched so much that they barely even fit so the back end has gone out so much that when I walk my foot flips out a lot so really bad and I know that flats aren't really that that good for you anyway support wise but if I'm going to be wearing flats for work I at least need to be wearing comfortable ones and so that's where these come in they are amazing I'm not sure why it's so hard to find navy shoes in the shops 
just seems to be ma mainly black and white and nude but anyway that's fine i found these online i will link both these and the black ones i just showed you in the description box down below but like i mentioned comfort these are even softer than what i just wore uh, showed you before however these are a stiffer material around the side so of course they'll need to be broken in but I'm very happy with these. And to be honest, they could have gone with today's outfit too. This is what they look like on. They are so comfortable. They match with this outfit as well, like I said. But I've decided to wear these black ones for today because like I mentioned, I will need to break these in a little bit. So you might see me walking around the house with some socks on my feet, trying to break in these shoes. But I'll show you what these other navy ones look like as well. Sorry, I think I just shook the camera a little bit. Now, they i loved these so much but if you look in the back they i'm not sure maybe you can see here a little bit better they flop too too much and the sole has been worn in to the point where they actually are just no support whatsoever but i will be wearing my black ones today they both go maybe you guys might tell me whether you think i should be wearing the navy or the black but i like the black for today anyway that, and that's a little bit of a shoe haul. Now I'm going to show you my grandmother's outfit because they are back from Dubbo. Look who's back from their weekend away and grandma. <laughs> I love it, it's all matchy. Oh wait, is that a scarf or is that a part of the shirt? Oh, it's a, I was going to say that's, oh, oh, you made it. I was going to, I was going to say that's a perfect match. Oh, we've got a nice leopard print shirt and granny's wearing a vest today too, which match nice with your, um, what color would you call those pants? Cream of some sort, beige of some sort. I don't know. With some white sneakers beige. anyway. Beige, yeah. And pearls to match the white vibe down below. I oh, love these so much. Oh, Granny's got a matching leopard print hair clip at the back. Very nice, Granny. I love it. Good morning, my babies. <laughs> Look at your mouths. All dirty from foraging for worms. And good morning to you all. Happy Tuesday. What an eventful couple of days. It's just getting to a point now where my vlogs have to end after every three days because so much happens that the vlogs just fill up so quickly. So I am going to end this vlog here first thing in the morning. Unusual, I know, but I want to end it on two things. First, this situation I shared with you guys last week's vlog or the vlog before that, how I was using that serum on my face, which I will again link in the description box down below. But I know on camera it may probably seem, and if I can put a before photo up just to help, I will. Um, it may probably seem like it's not a lot better because it does still look quite bad. But if you remember, it was quite cystic. It was very big and bumpy and so, so painful. But today, after using it for, I think we're almost at two weeks of using it now, it is doing a lot better. It still looks bad, I appreciate, but it is doing a lot better. Also, update. It has officially been a month. I was meant to update you after two weeks. It has officially been a month of me using the Olaplex serum on my lashes. So I think I took a before photo. And again, if I did, I will put that up here as well to show you what they look like before. Now, this is probably a bit of an unfair advantage because I've had that lash lift. However, I know what my lashes looked like the last time I got a lash lift shortly after my lashes not doing too well post getting lash extensions how many times did i just say lash and with my retainer in it's not easy <laughs> but i do believe that it has helped a lot i've seen them grow right in front of my eyes like it just definitely improved within the first two weeks i just forgot to update you all anyway that are they are rather my two updates again I hope you've all had a wonderful few days and I hopefully will see you in next week's vlog. I hope you enjoyed this vlog and until next time, everyone, much love and God bless.